Hello everybody, welcome back to the YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to cover Redux Toolkit in great, great detail, and we're going to learn how to utilize this wonderful technology inside of our React application. Now for this crash course, I'm going to assume that you know absolutely no Redux knowledge. So we're going to start from the very beginning. So you can come here as a complete beginner, and then you should be able to learn about Redux Toolkit and apply the concepts inside of your React app. So what we're going to do is we're going to learn exactly what Redux is, what it solves, and then we're going to learn about the theory of Redux and some of the data flow. And then, of course, we're going to go ahead and code out an application using Redux Toolkit. All right, that is wonderful. So let us go on and let's just start talking about Redux and what problems it solves. So right here, I have this diagram representing components inside of our React application. And so over here we have this component. So each box is a component and over here we have this green component and it is the parent of this indigo component right over here. So this is a child. This is the parent. Now this indigo component has this other component over here as its child. And then this component over here has this component as its child. And then this component over here has this component as its child. So you can see here that we have a bunch of nested components. And this is a very common structure that we see in React. And so right now, what we have is a piece of state that is in the top level component. So let's say that this green component has this piece of state and it needs it. It's either rendering it or it's doing something with a particular function. However, after we coded out our application, we also noticed that this component right over here also needs this state. Well, how are we going to get this piece of state inside of this purple component? Well, with the way that we have currently structured it, the only way we can do that is by passing this component down. So we would have to pass this component down over here. And then this component will pass it to this component. And then this component will pass it to this component. And then this component will pass it to this component. And well, that is not great. And the reason for this is we're drilling down our, uh, our state to the component that we desired. And thus, consequently, these three components over here have this piece of state that they're not really using. And as our, our application gets bigger and bigger, this is not a very maintainable approach. You can probably imagine that we're going to drill down our state through multiple components. And this is again, not very manageable and maintainable. So how do we fix this? Well, we fix this by taking this state and having the state live outside of the react Dom tree. So it's not going to live inside of any particular component. Instead, it's just going to live outside and any component that requires this piece of state. All it's going to do is just sync with that piece of state. So over here we have this component. It needs it. It can go ahead and sync with it. And over here, this component needs it. It's going to go ahead and sync with it as well. And these components can also update it. So this component can update hello to buy, and it's going to be seen here and here as well. And this is known as globally managed state. So over here, we have globally managed state. And Redux is a tool that allows us to globally manage our state. Now we can use it with multiple front end frameworks, but it is very popular with React. And so we can go ahead and globally manage our state with Redux. So now that we have an understanding of what Redux is, what it does, let's start talking about how data flows through Redux. And let's also talk about some of the terminology. And of course, if you are new to my channel, I love to do this through diagrams and analogies. So for this analogy, let's say that we have this wonderful woman over here and she just went to a restaurant. And of course, when you go to a restaurant, you get seated in a table and the table is empty in the beginning. Maybe there's a menu in this case, there's some books and a, and a cup of water, but let's just forget about those for now. We can just pretty much say that this table is empty. There's no food on the table. And so what we can do, this is kind of analogous to an empty array. So right now, the state of the table is empty. It's kind of like an empty array. Eventually, we want maybe an array of burgers and, and pizza inside. 
just like we want burgers and pizza inside of this table. But right now we have this completely empty array. And so this woman wants food on her table, of course. And what's the steps that you need to take to do that in a restaurant? Well, you got to wait for the waiter. And once the waiter comes, uh, she goes ahead and tells the waiter that, hey, I want some food. And the waiter is going to go ahead and write that down. So in this case, let's say the, the, the woman wants some cake. So she's going to say, hey, I want some cake inside of this table. Well, the waiter is going to go ahead and is going to note that down in a piece of paper. And what this waiter does is the first thing is the action that he wants to do. So the first word is the action that he wants to do. And this is add. And then the second word is, okay, what he wants to do that action with. So he wants to add cake. If he wants to remove cake, he would just say remove cake or remove pickles or remove whatever or swap cake to um, croissant or something like that. So the first word is an action. What we ultimately want to do, how we want to update our state. We want to add something to the table. We want to add something to the array. And then over here is, okay, what do we want to add? Well, we want to add cake. So this is in Redux terms analogous to action creators and actions. So in Redux, if we want to ever update our state, we have to create an action. And to create an action, we need an action creator. So the action creator, what they do is it's just a simple function that creates an action. And an action is just an object that typically has the, uh, the properties name. And this is again, or sorry, property type. And this is again, what we want to do in this case, add, and then the payload, then what we want to do it with. So in this case, we want to add cake into our state. And again, the action creator is the thing that creates this action. So over here, we have a function. This is an action creator is just simply a function. It's a function that takes in food. And what it does is it just returns this action. So it returns type add and then payload food. All right. So once we have created this piece of paper, this action, what we need to do is, well, we need to give it to the chef, of course. And so once the chef gets it, it's going to interpret the piece of paper, the action, and then the chef is going to be like, oh, OK, well, I am going to create a cake and add it to this array, add it to the table. And so this is analogous to a reducer in Redux. So a reducer is the ultimate thing that actually ends up updating the state. And this is also a function. And what over here we have the first parameter, which is the state of the application. So the current application and we default it to an empty array. And then over here we have the action. Remember, the action has an action type. So what, what we have here is a switch statement. So we're switching on the action type. And if it is add, what we are doing is we're returning a brand new array. So this is the structure syntax. And this might be a little bit confusing. Do not worry whatsoever. Uh, the reason why we have to return a brand new array instead of doing something like state dot push is because Redux is immutable. So what we're doing here is we're destructuring the state. And then we're also adding the action dot payload, which is cake in this case. And so by the end of it, what we should get is something like this. We should get the cake and then our state gets updated. And that's how uh, uh, data flows in Redux. And it's super, super, super important to know this, except maybe not that important actually, because you're learning about Redux toolkit. And to be quite honest, this is way too much. This is really a lot. And this is why people are very discouraged with building Redux applications. And let's just talk about why this is too much. So why do I care about creating this action creator and creating this action when I'm coding things out? Why can't I just simply get my state and just push cake into it? Just do like something like state dot push. Why do I have to create this action creator that creates an action that gives it to the reducer? Why can't I just simply update my state just very, very easily right away? So this step to me is just, it's just too cumbersome. I, I personally don't like it all too much. Also, I really don't like this immutability. You know, I don't like that I have to return a brand new array with the updated state every single time. This is just kind of confusing. Why do I have to do array destructure everything inside of the array and then add the action dot payload? I just want to do something like state dot push cake. Why do I have to do this? 
And also sometimes I do forget to initialize the state, you know, and that results in a lot of errors that might be hard to debug. So this is kind of annoying as well. Well, this is where Redux Toolkit comes into, uh, uh, into the rescue. So Redux Toolkit really simplifies it. We have no more action creators. We have no more action. We can, we can update our state in a mutable fashion. And I, I'm doing air quotes in, in this, and I'll explain why in a bit. But ultimately, we can simplify all this by using Redux Toolkit to something like this. So over here, we have a const customer food is equal to create slice. And I'll talk about what a slice is a little bit later. Do not worry. And all, all we have here is just the name of the slice, the initial state we have to add it, which is an empty array. And then simply we have our reducers. And then in the reducers, we have a bunch of methods that simply update the state. So over here, our initial state is an array. We have this add method. And all it is doing is updating our state in what appears to be an immutable fashion. We just do state.push and then action.payload. So every single time we want to just update our state, we just uh, grab a hold of this wonderful method and we just say add and then in our parameters we say cake and then we're done. It's simply. And what's great about this is with Redux Toolkit, everything that I said here is actually being done under the hood. But from a development standpoint, we don't have to worry about the action creators. We don't have to worry about the actions being dispatched. We just have to create something like this and then we are done. And over here, you can see that we're doing this in immutable fashion. So over here, remember, it was immutable. Over here, it is mutable. And actually what's happening is it's still immutable with Redux Toolkit, but from a development standpoint, it looks like it's uh, immutable. And what's great about this is it's using a package called Immer and it's doing this under the hood. So it's, it's, it's interpreting what's happening here and it's performing immutability under the hood. And so over here, it just looks very, very easy. You can just do something like state dot push action dot payload. And that's pretty much it. So now let's just quickly discuss what these slices are. So we'll discuss this in great detail when we're actually coding out our application. But a slice is a way where we can separate our state. So for example, maybe we had an application where we wanted to store the customer's food and also we want to store the customer's reservations. Well, these are two separate pieces of state, but well, we are going to separate them with two different slices. So ultimately we might have two of these things over here. So we're gonna have one slice for customer food and then another slice for customer reservations. And that's just a way where we can separate our state. All right, so let's just quickly talk about the prerequisites. For this, I do expect, you know, a little bit of React, just the basics of React. You should, if you're taking this Redux crash course, I do expect you to know React. Um, however, again, you do not know, you, you do not need to know any Redux. And also I am going to be coding this out in TypeScript. Really the, the way that the modern web is going, especially with uh, JavaScript applications, everybody is using TypeScript instead of JavaScript. And I was thinking about using JavaScript for this, but uh, really, I wanted to kind of do this right the first video. I was thinking about doing a JavaScript video and a TypeScript video, but I want to do this right the first video. And so I'm going to use TypeScript just because it's just best practice and it's actually was recommended by Redux. Now, if you don't know any TypeScript, do not worry. Uh, honestly, it's TypeScript is basically JavaScript with just a little bit of typing. And with Redux Toolkit, the TypeScript is not cumbersome at all. Uh, I do have a React with TypeScript crash course that you can take if you want to learn more about TypeScript, but you do not have to know that. Uh, anytime that we're dealing with TypeScript, I'll be very, very careful and explain what we are doing and how we can also do it if we were just working with JavaScript. So yes, it will be with TypeScript, but if you are a JavaScript developer, do not worry. Uh, you can still continue on and you might also learn a little bit of TypeScript. All right, so that is pretty much it. Uh, I'm super, super excited and I'll see you guys in the next section. All right, my good friends, in this section, what we are gonna be doing is setting up our application. But before we do that, let's quickly talk about what exactly will we be building with Redux Toolkit. Well, we're gonna be building this very, very simple application and it's gonna do exactly what I kind of talked about in the theory part of this crash course. 
So over here, we're going to handle the reservations. So we have a restaurant and we're going to handle the reservations. So over here, and let me just zoom in. I'm sure this is very small. So over here, we have the reservation list. So over here, we can add somebody to the reservations and we can add multiple people. We can also add um, Selena Gomez if we want to. And over here, we have our reservation list. Now, once somebody decides to come into our restaurant, we just all we have to do is just click on whoever came. So let's just say Selena Gomez came. We click on her and then now she's in the active customer list. And this is where we see uh, the food that Selena has got. So right now she has nothing, but let's say she ordered the lobster and eventually got the lobster. Then we can just say lobster here. And then we can add lobster and over here now you see lobster we can also obviously add other things maybe she also got a salad and over here we can get a salad and we can do the same thing over here with lathe and maybe lathe got a steak and then we can go ahead and add that and this is what we're going to be building and over here you can see that there's a lot of state and we're going to be managing that state strictly with redux toolkit and this might seem like a relatively complex application, but with Redux Toolkit, it's going to be really, really easy. All right. So to do this, of course, we need to get a React app up and running. So to do that, what you need to do is open up your terminal. And of course, you're going to need to have Node installed for this. So let's just go ahead. Let's open this up and do npx create React app. And this is assuming you have Node installed. And then just give your React app a name. I'm going to call it restaurant and then do dash dash template TypeScript because we're going to be doing this with TypeScript and not JavaScript. So we want the TypeScript uh, a template for the React application. That's it. That's really all you have to do. Go ahead and run this. Now this is going to fail for me because I already created it and you can see here that we have it. Now for you, just wait a bit. Uh, I, there's, there's a, you can actually probably use Vite if you want to be a little bit faster, but this might take like three to four minutes for it to run. But once it ran, open it up in your favorite text editor. I highly recommend VS Code and that is what I did. I opened it up in VS Code. Go to your terminal. I'll go to my terminal here. And then what you're gonna want to do is just do NPM. And let me zoom in here a little bit npm run start so just do npm run start and that should start up your application on localhost 3000 as you can see right over here now what we need to do here is just clean up our application our starter application and so to do that let's just go to our source directory let's go to our let's go to our app.tsx and let's just completely remove everything over here Let's go to our index.css. Let's remove all this. And let's go to our app.css. And let's just remove all this as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say go to my GitHub page right now. So go to my GitHub page. And what you're going to want to do is you want to go to this link over here. And I'll have this in the description below. So once you go here, go to the source directory. And the first thing that I want you to do is to go to the uh, sorry to go to the app.css and over here I have a bunch of styles just copy these styles and put them in your app.css file and this is just because I don't want to be styling the video in this crash course and also go to the app.tsx or sorry not the app.tsx go to the starter code.tsx and just copy this, the whole thing, and just put it inside of your app.tsx file. So copy that, paste that in there. And so what you should get is an application that looks like this. So right now, this doesn't work. As you can see, this doesn't work, but at least the UI is done. And now what we can do is just simply focus on the uh, actual Redux toolkit part. We don't have to worry about the UI. So that's pretty much set up and I'll see you guys in the next section.
All right, so now that we have set up our React application, let's go ahead and set up Redux Toolkit inside of our React application. Now, before we do this, I want to quickly note something about our application. Really, inside of our application, we have two separate pieces of state. We have our reservations, and then we have the state that deals with the customer's food. So in Re Redux Toolkit, what we're going to have to do to manage these two separate pieces of state is create two separate slices. So we're going to have over here a slice for reservation and over here a slice for our customer's food. So we're going to have to create two separate slices. Now in this initial setup, we're only going to set up one slice and this is going to be for the reservations. And then the next sections, we're going to make that slice functional and work. And then later on, we're going to go ahead and create the other slice, uh, which is the customer food slice. So you know what, let's just get right into it. Now to do this, what we're going to need to do is, of course, install a few dependencies. One of the dependencies is going to be npm install react redux. And the reason why we need react redux is because Redux Toolkit is not something that is completely isolated to React. It works with multiple different frameworks and actually works on its own. So we need this library to uh, connect Redux with React. And then what we also need is, of course, Redux Toolkit. We can get that from at Redux.js slash toolkit. And so go ahead and install this. I already installed it. And as you can see here, I have React Redux and I have at Redux.js and then Toolkit. Now, the first thing that we need to do is set up our store. So remember how the state is dealt with inside of our application. It is not located inside of any component. It is located outside of the component tree. And so we have to set up that state somewhere outside of the component tree. And to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to go here to our source directory. And what we're going to do is we're going to create an app folder. And this is what's recommended by Redux. And then in here, we're going to create a store.ts. We're dealing with TypeScript here. So we're going to say TS. And so the first thing that we want to do is configure our store. And we have a handy method for that from the package, the at, at, Redux toolkit package called uh, configure configure store. So we have this really, really handy thing that we can use. And so now all we have to do is just go ahead and do export const store. This is our store. And this is going to be equal to configure store. And then in here, this is going to take in an object. And then in here, we're going to have our reducers. So in here, we're going to have our reducers. And then inside of the reducers, we're going to have all of our different slices. Now, for now, we haven't created our slices, so I'm not going to add them in there for now. But we're going to add our slices in there later on. Now, this is just going to be a TypeScript thing, just so we can make our uh, lives a lot easier for TypeScript. If you're on JavaScript, you don't have to do this. Well, this is just going to allow us to, um, or sorry, not import. We're going to also over here do export, and then we're going to do export type, and then root state. And so what this is, is going to be the state of our application over here. And so we can just export it, and anytime we want to access our state, we can also access the type by getting root state. And so over here, we can just say return type return type and then this is going to be type of store dot get state so store dot get state so this is going to be our root state so it's going to be a type of whatever is going to be returned of type of store dot get state we're also going to need a dispatch type so we're going to do that right right away Usually you just kind of copy and paste this boilerplate. So we're going to say app uh, a type di app dispatch is equal to type of store dot dispatch. So and this is the dispatch type. All right. So we have configured our store, but now we need to uh, connect it to our react application. 
Now, how do we do that? Well, we do that by going to the index.tsx and importing the provider. So what we do is we import a provider, and this is going to be a component from the React Redux library. So over here, we're gonna take provider, and then in here, we're gonna wrap our whole component. So this app component is our whole component. We're gonna wrap our whole component with this uh, provider component. So we're gonna go here, say provider, and we're gonna have our closing over here, provider. And in TypeScript, you can see that it's angry at us because what it does is it expects the store. And this is going to be the store that we have created over here. So what I can actually do is just simply say store and it should auto import and it does. And so what we did here is by wrapping our whole application inside of this provider component and passing in the store, we're supplying our whole application with this store. So any data inside of this store can be found inside of any component because we have wrapped this provider uh, with, this app, uh, with the app component. And so that's what the provider does. So very simply now we have hooked up our Redux application. So now the next step is to create our very first slice. So over here, remember, we want to create the reservation slice. And so to do that, what we are going to be doing is go to our source directory and we're gonna create a brand new a directory inside there called features. This is recommended by Redux to do this. And in here, we're going to create the reservation slice. So the reservation slice dot TS. Now, similarly to when we created and configured our, uh, our store, we need to import some things here. So what we need to do is to create our slice is from the Redux toolkit library, we need to create slice we need to get this create slice method and now over here what we can simply do is say export const and we can say reservations slice is equal to create slice and then we have to give our slice a name this can be called anything i'm going to call this reservations so reservations and we also have to give our slice an initial state. So typically what's done is you go over here and you just say const initial state, initial state, and that's gonna be equal to an object. It doesn't have to be, but typically it's an object where we have a value and that value is going to be whatever you want it. Now in this case, we want our initial state to be an array because we're gonna hold an array of strings for our reservations. So over here, we can just say that our initial state is going to be this initial state. Now, I might have done a little bit of misspelling here. I just wanna see, I'll just respell this. Initial state. I wonder, I'm actually kinda of curious where the difference is. I thought they're exactly the same. They are exactly the same. That's kind of strange. Cause like I was expecting, oh, the reason, sorry. The reason why, okay, so now the initial state is this initial state over here, but now we need the reducers. So we need the reducers as well. So the reducers are important. And the reducers are going to simply house an object. And in this object, we're gonna have a bunch of methods that is going to update our state. For example, we can have add, and add can be a method. So over here we can have colon and this can be a, an arrow function. And over here we can simply do something like um, state dot value, or sorry, uh, we can have, oh, over here we would have access to the state as the first param. We can do something like state dot value dot push and we can push whatever it is that we want. So over here, we can do uh, any of that. But for now, we'll just keep it empty. All right, that is awesome. Now what's great is once we create these methods, we can actually export these action creators that it automatically creates under the hood. We won't do that for now because we haven't created any of that. But what we want to do is we want to actually export this whole slice. 
So let's go do that right now. So we're gonna do go ahead and we're gonna do an export default and we are going to export the reservations slice and then we're gonna export the reducer, the reducer that it creates. So when we do dot, you can see that it creates actions and it also creates reducers. So we're going to export default the reducer. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to our store, very, very simply, and then we're gonna add that reducer inside of our store. So over here, what we can say is, well, we have reservations and then colon, and this is going to be the reservations reducer. So we can go ahead over here and just simply say reservations reducer that we export defaulted. And we can say from, and then we can say in, from the feature and from the uh, reservation slice. So we can go ahead here and we can do that. And now we have set up our application and that's really all we have to do. If you come from a Redux background and you've done this before, the setup is so much tougher. This is a lot easier and a lot better. Now let's actually go ahead in the next section and start adding some methods here so we can actually manipulate our application. In this section, we're gonna learn how we can update the state in our application. So when we go ahead and we add something, we should see this over here, update. Now, right now in our slice, the initial state is an empty array. So simply all we want to do is when we add something over here, we should add that string inside of this array. Now, how do we do that? Well, inside of this reducer, all we have to do is create the method that we want to use to update that particular state. So over here, we may want something like add reservation. So we want to add a reservation. And this is going to be an arrow function. So this is gonna be an arrow function. Now, the first parameter is the state. And this is something that uh, Redux is going to pass in automatically. And that's just, just simply going to be the state that we have set over here as our initial state. So if I were to do something like state, you should see state.value, and then, then that should be an array, so we should see a lot of array methods like push, reduce, etc. So over here we have the state. Now the second thing is the action payload. So over here we have the action. Now in TypeScript, what we have to also say is what the type the, that the payload is going to be. And over here we have something called payload action. And this is the payload action type. So now what we can do is payload action. And over here we can say that the payload action is just going to be a string because really all it is is gonna be a string of the a name that we want to add. So now very, very simply and easily what we have to do is just say, well, state dot push, and we want to push the, or sorry, not state dot push, state dot value dot push, and we want to push action dot payload. So we want to push action dot payload. Now over here it's yelling at us because this is a TypeScript thing. It doesn't know what the type of this is over here. So it doesn't know what the type of that is. That's because it's just an empty array. We set it as an empty array. So in TypeScript to set the type of something, we can set an interface. This is not something that you would have to do if you are uh, doing doing this in um, if you're doing this in JavaScript. So what we would have to do is say that uh, that uh, we have an interface here, and over here we're gonna say that this is the reservation state. So we're gonna say reservation state, and this is going to be an object, and then this is going to have a value in the object where the property is value and the a key is an array of strings. And so now what we need to do is of course we need to tell TypeScript that our initial state is going to be of type reservation state. And now you can see that it's not mad at us anymore. This is a very TypeScript thing, but uh, so you don't have to worry about that inside of um, a, a just a simple JavaScript application. All right, so now what we want to do, okay, let's actually go ahead and use this method. Well, to use this method, we actually have to export it. 
And remember what happens under the hood is it creates a bunch of action creators for us. So what we can do is we can do something like export and we can do export const and then we can say is equal to reservation slice dot actions. And now we will be able to access the add reservations action. So now what we can do is we can export this out, import it into any component that we want to use and just simply use it. All right, cool. So now let's actually go to our app.tsx and over here you can see, you know, there's a lot going on. Let me just get rid of this, make this a little bit bigger over here. Let's also get rid of this, minimize it a little bit. Over here we have a, a, a component and you know, there's, there's quite a bit going on, but you can see here that the reservation section is inside of this div over here. And you can see that we have the header right over here. And then we have in here, this is the reservation card. So right here, this is the reservation card. So what we can do is we can actually add the multiple cards in here and it should be reflective inside of our react app, as you can see. So what we want to do is we want to render this dynamically instead of uh, continuously uh, 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 just, you know, hard coding it. So the first thing that we want to do is to be able to actually see our state. Because right now in, in the component, we can't really see our state. We, we want to be able to get access to our state. Well, there's actually a very handy method or, or, or hook that we can use to do that. And that is called the use selector hook. And I'm not going to import it. I'm actually going to go ahead and auto import it. So what I want is the reservation. So I can say reservations is equal to the use selector hook. And I auto imported it as you can see. And then over here, this is going to be, of course, a hook. And this inside the hook, we're going to have a, uh, a callback. And over here, the first callback is going to, the first parameter in the callback is going to be the state of our application. And we actually have to define the type of this. And this is root state. And this is a root state right over here that we have created. So you can see it's already being useful. And this is again, a TypeScript thing. And then ultimately we have to define what we want to a return. And so over here we can say state dot reservations dot value. And this is going to be the reservations. And so now what we can do very, very simply is let's actually go in here and let's create a components directory. So we're going to create components and then in here, we're going to create the customer card component. So let's go ahead and let's create this customer card component. And this is just simply going to be this div over here. So let's go here and let's just say customer card. Uh, dot tsx and we can do r uh, fc to get a functional component and then in here what we're simply going to do and this is going to be or sorry this is not the customer card this is the reservation card so let's just say reservation card here apologies for that reservation card and over here we're going to have to change this to reservation card as well so over here reservation card and over here simply all we're going to do is we're going to get this over here and we're going to paste it right in there so we're going to go ahead and paste it and what we want to do is not hard code it but actually get the uh get the uh state from the props so to do this we need to in typescript define how our uh, uh type uh, our prop types are going to be so we do that through an interface so we can say a reservation card types. Again, this is just a TypeScript thing. And over here, we're gonna say we have a name and it's gonna be a string. And so here inside of the props, what we can do is we can just say reservation types and we can say name. And then in here, we can simply say name. And so now what we can do is we can go ahead and save this. And in here, instead of just hard coding it, what we can do is you can iterate through reservations. We can just map through it. And then over here we can say name, because this is a name. And then, oops, inside of here, we can say name, and then we can return 
the reservation card and we auto import it as you can see. Now it's yelling at us because we want the name and so we can say that the name is passed in. All right, very cool. So now you can see that it's completely empty, but just to prove to you that it works and we have access to it, if we go to our slice over here, let's just add Selena and save. And if I were to refresh, we should see Selena and we do. All right, very, very cool. So now we were able to view it, but now I want to actually trigger this call once we add something and press this add button. So how do we go about doing that? Well, it's it's actually not that difficult with uh, Redux Toolkit. It's actually really, really easy. So to do that, what we need to do is we need to go to our app.tsx. So in here, let's go here. And the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna have two-way binding. So I want to be, have access to that input. So let's go over here inside of our function and then let's just say that the um, that the reservation input reservation name this is really a name input and then over here we're gonna say set reservation name input and this is gonna be equal to use state so use state and initially it's going to be an empty string and this is just two basic two-way binding. And then over here, we're gonna say that the value of the input is equal to this particular state. However, when we do change it, we're gonna invoke this function call. So we're gonna invoke this function call, and this is gonna take E, and it's gonna be, it's going to call the set reservation name input, and it's gonna pass in the e.target.value. And that way we always have the value of the input inside of this state over here. So now we're able to change it and this will also have that value. So now what we wanna do is we want to add an on click. So when we click on this, what we want to do is we wanna call a particular function. Now what is that function called? Uh, we can call it um, we can call it a uh, handle click, but I'm gonna be more specific. I'm gonna call it handle add reservation. So reservations. Of course, we don't have this function over here. So let's go ahead and let's create it. And so the first thing that we want to do is we, want to, we don't wanna add an empty a string to our state. So let's just go ahead and we're gonna say if the uh, reservation input, so reservation name input is empty, just return. And so if it's an empty string, uh, by default, it's gonna return falsy. And so by saying this not, it becomes true. And then we go ahead and we return. So that's the first thing that we want to do. Now, the second thing that we want to do is, well, if there is a valid input in there, well, we want to add it to this global state. Well, to do this, we're gonna need access to, uh, we're gonna need access to this add reservation, um, add reservation action creator. So let's go in here and I'm gonna auto import it. Just say add reservation and you should be able to auto import it as you can see here, or you can import it yourself if you want to. And you might be thinking, okay, now what I can do is I can just simply say add reservation and I can pass in I can pass in this reservation input. Well, no, it actually doesn't work that way. In Redux, what we need to do is we need to dispatch an action. We need to go ahead and dispatch an action. So we absolutely need something called use dispatch. So we need use dispatch. And you know what? You, I don't want to confuse you guys. This is, uh, you, you can just kind of just look at the syntax. At the end of the day, what we're doing here was we're calling this, but we're wrapping it around a dispatch. And so if you don't understand it, that's okay, actually. What you can do is just understand the syntax and be like, oh, okay, I have to do this. So you first have to create this dispatch and then in here, wrap this call with this dispatch. That's all you have to do. So we can dispatch the action. And now at the very end, maybe what we want to do is clear the state so we can set set name input to an empty 
string. So very simply now, what we can do is let me just refresh. I can actually go ahead and add, and it doesn't work for some reason. I am very surprised. Uh, da -da -da -da. So we're dispatching this. Why is that not working? Let me just quickly refresh. Sometimes it like doesn't work initially. Let me go to the reservation slice and let's let me quickly try to debug this. Let's just see if this is even being called. So we're going to go here. We're going to say console.log hello. And if it doesn't, I'll just cut the video and just show you guys what's what went wrong. So let's go here. Let's just again refresh. So it seems like it's not even being called. So I'll be right back just to do a quick little debug and then uh, uh, I'll be right back. My bad, I actually did this before. I was actually dealing with the wrong input and button. I was actually working with these input and buttons over here. So what we actually have to do is work with this input and this button. So huge apologies for that if you guys got confused. So just copy and paste the input as well as the button in here and then cut out this and then just paste it in here. So sorry about that. Hopefully that's not too confusing. I was just, again, I was dealing with this input and this button and that's why it wasn't working. So now what we can do is very simply just go here and add. And as you can see here, it adds, it added. All right, that is awesome and that is terrific. But now let's talk about how we can actually remove it. Well, let's actually do that right now. So inside of the slice, so let's go over here inside of the slice. What we want to also do is remove a reservation, of course. Well, to do this, of course, we need to create another method inside of this reducer object. So let's go ahead and do that right now. And we're going to call this method remove a reservation. So we're going to say remove reservation. And this is going to be same, same exact thing. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to find the index. So we're, what we're going to do is we're going to pass it the index in the payload. So it's going to be a number. And what it's going to do is it's going to take that index and then just splice that element out with that particular index. And so over here, what we can say is state dot value dot splice. So if you don't know what the splice method does is we're going to give it two parameters first the uh, the first parameter is the index, which is going to be the action payload. And then the second parameter is how many uh, uh, how many elements from that index do we want to remove from the in from from uh, uh, the array. So over here, let's say that we have an element of, of five ind indices, then over here, we're going to say that, okay, you I want to remove, I want you to start at the index of three and remove one element, which is going to be the the element at index three. So that is removing. And so what we ultimately want to do is when we actually click on the card itself, we want to remove that card. So let's go here and let's go to the card. And so because now we need the index, we need to also say that we want the index in the, uh, the, the, the props. So over here we can say index. And now what we can do is say we can add an on click onto this. So what we can say here is on click and then we can say on click and over here we're going to have to do the exact same thing. So we're going to have to create that dispatch. So const dispatch is equal to use dispatch. So use dispatch and I misspelled dispatch here. Not that it really matters, but I misspelled it. And over here, what we want to do is we want to dispatch. And before we do that, let's go to our slice and let's actually export this out. So remember, we have to go ahead and export it. So we're gonna save that. We're gonna go over here and we're gonna go ahead and dispatch. And I'm gonna auto import it, remove a reservation and we're going to pass in the index that we have from here. And so now what we need to do, as you can see here in TypeScript, we need to actually pass in the index. And so the index, we can get it from the second parameter of map. And so we can say index. 
and we can save that now. Let's refresh. And now if I were to add, let's add a few. And if I were to click on this, you can see that they're being removed. So we have pretty much built out half of our application. Now we have to worry about the other half. So just as a reminder, we built out the reservation system. We we're able to add reservations as well as remove reservations. But now what we want to do is work on the customer aspect of our application and dealing with the customer food. And so what do we want to do? Well, when we add a reservation and click on it, we don't want to just remove it. You want to add it over here to the customer portal. Let's go to the actual uh, complete version. So over here, when we add a reservation and then click on it, we should see it over here as well. So that's what we want. And also we of course want to be able to add food to the customers and it should populate into the correct customer. So this is a whole new piece of state and therefore we're going to have to create a brand new slice. Now this part is a little bit more complicated, but it is not going to include anything new that we have done. So I do highly encourage you to pause this video and try to do it on your own. If not, do not worry. We're going to go through it right now. So of course, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go to, um, go to the uh, features directory and create a brand new slice. So let's go here. And then in here, we're going to create a customer slice. Remember, each time we have a new aspect of our application, we're going to have to create a slice for it. So here we go. And I'm just going to open up the reservation slice and I'm just going to copy and paste that in there. I'm not going to go through it again because it would just take too long. And I, we already went through it once. So we're going to change the state to customer state. Now the value isn't just going to be an uh, array of strings. Instead, it's going to be an array of objects. And so the object is going to be, we're going to have an ID that is a string, a name that is a string, and then food that is an array of strings. So that's going to be the new type. Again, this is a TypeScript thing. So to define that type, we can say interface customer. And then we're going to say here, we want an ID that's a string, we want a name that's a string, and then we also want food that is an array of strings. And we're going to say that the customer state is going to be an array of this customer object. All right, and now we're going to say that the initial state is of type customer state. So let's go here. Let's say that and we're going to remove all these methods. We're going to add them a little bit later. We're going to change this to customers. And then over here, we're going to say customer slice. So let's go here and let's say customer slice and over here, customer slice. And then let's remove these actions. And then over here, lastly, customer slice. All right, cool. So now to hook up this state into our store, we need to go to our store directory. And then in here, let's just copy and paste this import. We're going to import the customer reducer. So the customer reducer from the customer slice. And we're going to go ahead and just say customer and then customer reducer. All right, there we go. So now we have hooked it up into our state. So now what we want to do is let's go to our app.tsx and let's do something very similar to this over here. I want to not just hard code this card. What I want to do is um, dynamically render it based on the state. So let's just go into, so what I want to do is let's just go into um, the components and let's create a customer card customer card dot T S X. And then in here, let's just do this and let's just go here and inside the div that says customer food card container, let's just cut that out. 
and let's move that in here. So we're gonna move that in there. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna uh, get the state, the customer state. To do that, we're gonna copy this. Remember, we're gonna use the use selector and we're gonna call this customers. And then over here, because we have the root state, we're able to access dot customer dot value. All right, so now what we can do is very, very simply, for each, uh, for each customer that we have, for each customer that we have, what we can do is we can just map through them. We can have a customer and we can return the customer card. And of course, it's not showing that because actually it should show that. What I'm trying to see if it, it's going to auto import, but for some reason it's not auto importing. I guess we're going to have to import it manually ourselves. So let's just do import customer card from components slash. Huh. What is going on here? It's not even being detected. Save this. It's in the components directory, is it not? Customer cards. Let's just customer card. For some reason it's not being detected by TypeScript. All right, so let's just go ahead and save that. And what we should see if I refresh is absolutely nothing in the beginning. Everything else should be functional, of course. Now what I want to do is when I click on this, it should populate right over here. It should populate. So what we need to do is go to the reservation slice. So we need to, or the reservation card. And in here, we call the dispatch to remove the reservation, but we should also call another uh, dispatch a method to add the customer. So we need to remove the reservation and add the customer. So of course, to do this, we need to go into our slice and actually create a method that adds our, um, that adds our customer. So we're going to say add customer. And this is going to take in the state and it's going to take in the, uh, the, the action and it's going to have a type of customer because we're going to need an object with an ID and name as well as an array of foods. So we're going to say payload action. And you know what? Let's just auto format this. And this is going to be of type customer. All right. And now what we want to do is simply just do state dot value dot push. And then we want to push an object. So what we want to do is we want to push uh, the action dot payload. So it's very simply what we want to do. So over here, we can go ahead and export this out. And now in here, so inside of the reservation slice, uh, or sorry, not the reservation slice into this card. Let's go ahead and let's see if we can auto import this. I'm not sure if we can for some reason. The auto imports are not really working for me at the moment. I'm shooting this the next day, so I'm not sure why that's not happening. Let's remove this for now. I'll comment it out. Uh, let's go here and we're going to do import. We're going to import add customer from features slash the customer slice. And so now what we want to do is we want to do the exact same thing. So we want to go here, we want to dispatch, but this time we want to add the customer. And this time, this is going to be an object. Remember, we're going to have an ID. And then we're also going to have, um, we're also going to have the name. So the name we actually get from here. And initially, when we add the customer, what we can do is we can have the food be an empty array. Now the ID, we need it to be a uh, dynamically generated string that is going to be unique across all IDs. To do this, as you can see here, I'm going to be using UUID. So to get UUID, let me just close this. To get UUID, all you need to do is just do npm install UUID and you also need to install the types for UUID. So install that. And then what you will have access to is well the UUID package. And so just do import v4, which is a type uh, just an algorithm that generates this random string. And then over here we say as UUID. So we use v4 syntactically not, or so we use UUID syntactically not v4. 
And so over here, what we can do is we can just say UUID and this is just going to generate a random string for us. So now let's actually just give this a try. So now if I click on this, this should appear over here. And let me refresh. All right, let's add, click, and there we go. It appears right over here. Now, the only thing is, well, this data is always going to be uh, Selena Gomez because if you go to the customer card, you can see we hard coded it. So what we need to do is um, just get the data. And this isn't really a type or this isn't a really a Redux toolkit thing. We just need to pass the data via props and then uh, uh, accept them here and actually render the data. So let's just do that right now. So what are the props that we need? Well, let's create an interface for this. So we're going to say customer card types. This is, again, a TypeScript thing. We're going to say we're going to need the ID. But we're going to say that we want the name, which is a string. And we're going to say that we want the food that is a string of or an array of strings. And we're going to ask for it here. So we're going to say card or customer card types. So we're going to say here, we want the ID, the name, as well as the food. And then in here, instead of saying that, hey, we want Selena all the time, we'll say this. And then we, what we want to do is we want to iterate over. So we want to iterate over the food and render them. So in here, inside of the customer food div, what we're going to do is we're going to open that up and then we're just going to simply iterate over the food. So we're going to say food map. You can call this, uh, let's call it just food again, whatever. And then what we're going to do is we're going to return a P tag that has the food. So we'll save this. Now it's going to yell at us over here because we're not passing any of that data. So let's just go here. We're going to say ID is equal to customer dot ID. And then we're going to say the name is equal to the customer dot name. And then lastly, the food is equal to the customer dot food. All right. So if I were to save this, you can see here now it's dynamic. So if I were to say something like late harb, and then add that in there and then go over here, you can see that that works. So now the absolute last thing that we need to work on is to when I press add here, it should add to the specific user. So for this, there's multiple ways we can do this. But of course, we need to go into our slice because we're going to be manipulating our state. So what do we need to do inside of our slice? Well, we need to add a method that knows exactly what the user is. And then it's going to update the uh, food array based on that particular user. Because right now what we have is a array of objects and each object represents a user. So how can we know what user this is? Well, inside of the customer slice, we passed the ID. So we passed the ID. So what we can do is we can filter by the ID and then we can get the food that we probably are going to have in the action payload and then just inject that into that particular person's food array. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So let's go to the customer slice and then we're going to say here, add food to customer. So we're going to say add food to customer. And let's just do the whole thing so we can get auto uh, format. So we're going to say state and we're going to say action. And this time we need uh, we need um, we need two things. We don't need we just need the food that is a string and then the ID. So let's actually create another interface for this. And we're going to say add food to customer, add food to customer payload. And this here is going to be the food, which is a string, and then the ID that is a string. And so now what we can do is inside of the payload action, what we can say is we want this. All right. So very simply now, what we want to do is we want to iterate over the uh, all of the foods or all of the customers, find the actual customer where the ID is equal to the ID that we passed in, and then 
we want to push the particular food into their food array. So this is really easy. We're just going to do state dot value dot for each. Because we're going to iterate through every single one. And then we're going to iterate through every single customer. So we're going to iterate through every single customer. And then for each customer, we're going to check if the customer dot ID triple equals the action dot payload dot ID. So the ID that we passed in, then what we want to do is we want to do customer dot food dot push. And we want to go ahead and push in the action dot payload dot food. All right. And again, let's just like, just just admire how amazing this is. We don't have to worry about immutability. We just have to go ahead and push it and Redux Toolkit deals with everything. And that's it. That's all we have to do. And so now let's just hook this up to our application. So let's go ahead and save this. And in here, we need to, of course, export it out. And so where are we going to be dealing with this in our application world? We're going to deal with this inside of this card over here. So we need to go to the customer card and inside of the customer of card, we need to add or the logic to call this function or this method. So let's go to the customer card. And of course, to do this, we're going to need dispatch. So let's do dispatch. And um, so we're going to do dispatch and then we're going to do use dispatch. All right. And so when do we want to call this? Well, of course, we want to get the user's input first. So let's just create a use state for double binding. So we're going to say customer food input. And then over here, we're going to do set customer food input. And then this is going to be equal to use state. Notice I auto imported it. Initially, it's going to be an empty uh, array. And then inside here, let's just set the value. We're going to set the value to be uh, the customer food input. And then on change, we're going to invoke an anonymous function that's going to set the customer food input to e.target.value. Very, very, very simple. Okay, so now that we got that out of the way, well, now what we want to do, of course, is to uh, when we call this button, we want to dispatch that call. So let's have an on click here. So on click, and when we click on this, we want to dispatch. And what do you want to dispatch? Well, add food to customer. Notice I auto imported it again. And then in here, what we're going to do is we're going to call this. And then of course, we need to pass in the ID as well as the food. And so the food in this case is going to be the customer food input. Now, of course, here you can also add some validation. So if you can say here, if the customer food input is empty, we can go ahead and just return this because we probably don't want to add empty food. And then at the very end, maybe it will be kind of cool if we can do something like set food input to an empty string at the very end. That's pretty much it. I hope this works. Let's, uh, I really do hope this works. Let's add a reservation. Now let's add food and it does work. There we go. Now, if I were to add another reservation here, maybe I should put like somebody real. Let's add somebody real here. Now let's add lobster. And you can see here that we have lobster. So that's pretty much Redux Toolkit. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you guys see how valuable and how easy utilizing Redux toolkit is. I have a big project that I'm working on and I was about to use just plain old Redux, but after learning Redux toolkit, I'm using Redux toolkit. I absolutely love it and I hope you guys do as well.